Hello everyone. I wanted to show you uh, the latest uh, things to come off of my painting desk. Um, as you probably know, I'm, I'm heavily into a Crimean War 18mm project at the moment. Um, and I'm painting figures in quite large numbers for that. But to give me a break from it every now and again, what I do is kind of um, pick up a small group of figures from my lead mountain and paint those and I do it in a very kind of random way whatever happens to have piqued my interest at the time I'll go and find some figures to suit that and paint those and I was recently watching on television a TV series called The Price of Empire um, which was I thought was a very good series um, on, on the subject of the Second World War and um, it begins with some of the opening footage is of some Japanese um, infantry, I think, fighting in China. But um, I just th thought, yeah, I'll, I'll, I had some um, Japanese figures, not very many, painted up already. So I thought I'd get some more of those out and paint those up to complement them. And um, what you're looking at here with these four figures are... Um, the assault group, uh, a, a, a blister pack from them, um, uh, figures with submachine guns. So I painted four of those and I also painted a Warlord Games, um, I think it's a 70mm infantry gun. Um, which comes with three figures and the gun itself and finally I painted this uh, Observer character who's also from Wardle Games um, so those are the ones I painted but as I say I had uh, I have got about 30 odd, 33 I think it is other figures um, all of them from the assault group so I thought I'd get those out and show you those as well um, as I don't think I've ever put them up on YouTube before um, it's unlikely that I'll get around to painting or finishing the rest of my Japanese unpainted Japanese figures for a while um, as I say I wanted to just add little bits and pieces here and there and my main project is definitely still the Crimean War but every now and again you'll come to a spot where you have to stop to let something dry or whatever or you just need a break from painting 18mm so that's what I did and um, I'll give you a bit of a close-up look at the figures in a moment but just briefly to say um, I much prefer the assault group to the Wardle Games figures um, the problem being that they are a bit limited in in the troop types and so on. So if you want something like um, an infantry battalion gun or a tank or whatever, you've got to go somewhere else to source it. Um, I painted them using a painting guide that used to be on the assault group's website, and sadly it's no longer there. They've they've uh, renovated their website, but they've lost some pages which I found very helpful and, in, and good to look at as well um, but uh, I managed to kind of remind myself of the paints that I had used they're, they're all Wargames Foundry paints and I painted them up in uh, one, one of the problems you have with the Japanese army in the Second World War is of course that um, although they fought uh, in the Pacific theatre in totality, there were there were a lot of different environments and the different and 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 the, and the uniform colouring seemed to change quite a lot. Um, I'm no great expert on it, but as I say, I used the colourings recommended from the assault groups website, and they that 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 painting guide suited me because the colours look to me as though they're. Uh, fitting for the Pacific Island um, 
battles rather than the battles in China or in the jungles of Burma or whatever. Um, because my aim eventually, although I haven't got any figures yet, is to fight them against US Marines on islands such as Tarawa and Iwo Jima and that kind of thing. Um, but that's the problem you have in a way, that, that um, you, you have to make a decision fairly early on when you're painting Japanese what you want them to actually represent. Um, these figures, obviously I've based them on kind of sandy looking bases and they just won't do for the jungles of Burma now. Um, and apart from the uh, assault groups website painting guide, I used as my main reference material this book here, which is a book I've had about 20 years now. Imperial Japanese Army and Navy Uniforms and Equipment. Um, the title's in English, but very little else is. Um, but happily, they do include this uh, English language summary of the captions. Um, but it gives you, this book really, really gives you an idea of the, it's not just the Second World War, it goes right back to um, the wars in China at the end of the 19th century and in uh, the, the Russo-Japanese War and so on, but it's mainly Second World War. <clears throat> and um, it gives you a real good idea of the variety and colourings of, of, uh, of various uh, items of equipment and uniforms and so on. I mean, just look at that for the difference in in colouring of the tropical helmets and the helmets themselves and so on. So really, I'd, I think if you are setting out on painting a, a, a World War II Japanese army, you don't need to be too worried about um, uh, sticking to a particular colouring and so on, which suits me, which suits you know, me as I have very little true knowledge of the, the period or, and so on. Um, Another example is something like the uh, the water canteens. Um, it was all the can I give you another, all the assault group. Um, figures have water canteens, which are very much of this appearance. Uh, let's try and find a better example. So there, you can see that one a little bit more clearly, I think, on there. Um, but just look at how the same water canteen or the same appearance of it can, can change in colour from this sort of brownish to a metallic sheen. And um, these ones here as well, very different colours. These ones here are obviously different shapes and they must at some stage have been metallic underneath but they've been painted a kind of olive green colour but that's that's my main message is don't get hung up too much on on colourings um, same goes for the clothing as well um, I should have really marked some pages before I started off but uh, look at that same tunics, completely different colours. Same goes for trousers, that kind of thing. So um, don't necessarily do your own thing, but uh, don't get hung up too much on on what you might consider to be historical accuracy, because you'll always find a different tone or a different colour that is just as uh, realistic as another. Right, OK, I'll just um, turn the camera off for a second and then I'll give you a little bit of a better close-up of the figures. OK, so I'll start with the 70mm uh, gun. Um, didn't do a particularly good job on it in the end. Um, it was only when I glued it to its base and you probably can't see too easily there, but um, it's a little bit... Uh, asymmetric shall we say in the way I've got glued the legs on 
um, so it's not particularly symmetrical. And um, this particular gun um, had the axles, I think you can see them there, they're sort of uh, where they join the wheel, there's like a nine, two 90 degree turns connecting it to the axle and in real life the gun could either be raised so that the the axle, the, that 90 degree turn was sort of vertical to the horizontal axis of the axle, if you see what I mean. So that, in other words, so that it was pointing upwards a little bit more, so that the gun could be fired with a, a sort of higher trajectory and a, a, over a longer distance. Or the gun could be, um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the axle could be turned around 90 degrees so that the 90 degree part of the axle was horizontal and in the same plane as the horizontal axis. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, that the, um, the gun was lying flatter and uh, was fired at closer ranges. Um, and so either, either, either is uh, acceptable, um, depending on what you choose to do, but there are, there are no instructions as usual with Warlord games, uh, guns and so on. So um, it took a little bit of research to work out that I could do one or the other when I put it together. But I've then found that uh, the two figures, let's turn it around a little bit. The two figures um, are very difficult to position behind the gun. Um, they don't come on bases, unlike the third figure, which does come on a metal kind of base, which so I've based that separately. Um, but looking at the website, it looks to me as though the two figures have actually been positioned crouching over the limbs of the gun. Um, and of course, if you've got the axle raised higher, which I wanted to do, then it becomes impossible to do that. And there's no space between those two legs to put both of the figures. Um, so that's something, if you ever do paint this model up, something to take into consideration before you glue the gun together. Um, a minor, a minor kind of obstacle. I mean, then it's, if you actually look too closely, that is, they're not in the right positions, but you don't really notice it too, too much. Um, the other Warlord figure... Um, comes with a number of heads. I chose the one with the cap on with the glasses. Um, I don't think they're terribly good mouldings, but uh, nothing awful. And then these four guys here are from a pack, as I think I said earlier, with submachine guns. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm happy with them all, except for this fella here. Who, um, I think you can see there has a gun that's uh, capable of shooting around corners it's really bent but it's attached with a lot of metal to the actual body so if you were to kind of clean it all out and straighten the barrel out A. you could do a lot of damage to the, the main part of the sculpt but B. there would be no detail on the inside of the submachine gun anyway um, so I left it like that, and it only looks, you only really notice it looking at it from above, but um, not very good. Uh, sculpt really, but all the other figures that I painted long ago, or not so, a couple of years ago, um, these were all from the Assault Group, and I think they are fantastic figures, really really good. I don't think I've got a complaint with any of them. Um, quite expensive, the Assault Group. And again, as I said earlier, limited in the troop types and uh, weapon types and so on. Nothing heavy like uh, this infantry gun, gun in their range. But uh, I would go to the assault group first for um, 
a lot of my World War II figures now. Um, unfortunately, you don't see them down in the south very often at shows. They tend to um, stay up north. I saw them at um, Vatnitak in 2016 when I went to that show up in York. Um, in fact, I think that's when I bought these these four figures. Um, but well worth uh, checking out if you're not aware of the range already. And that's it. Um, a bit slow progress in terms of my Crimean War. They really are, I'm painting Highlanders at the moment. I'm painting over 50 of them. They're taking me ages to do. But I um, should be able to show you other little bits and pieces that I'm painting on the side, such as this, in the upcoming weeks. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.